Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top, beautiful morning uh, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a gorgeous Tuesday morning in the Point Lonesome Swamp, deep in the oasis of freedom. Uh, oh, we have made it to February. It is Tuesday, February 1st, 2022. Unbelievably, another month down and <coughs> this uh, shit show still holds together by a thread. But anyway, speaking of uh, spectacles, shit show spectacles, yesterday I <coughs> introduced a fellow here, uh, that I have had never heard of until uh, yesterday morning. This fellow named Eric, uh oh, now I'm forgetting his name. I think it's Eric Rittenberry. I need to confirm that. And once again, I want to thank Alert <coughs> Listener RC for introducing me to uh, Eric's work. And as I mentioned yesterday, I believe this is one of the single most spot-on analyses of the state of the planet, at least from a cultural perspective here in early 2022, as, any, as much as anything I have ever read. Uh, so I read about the first half of that essay yesterday, so I'll put the link on to that video and I will put the link where you can go read the entire essay yourself on medium.com and uh, what I like so much about this essay, well I really like Eric's writing as well, but he, uh, he introduces us to a whole lot of other people that you may or may not be familiar with and so we're gonna we ended up with Aldous Huxley at the end of part one, and we're going to pick up, or Eric's going to pick up, uh, by introducing us or reintroducing us to this fellow named Lewis Mumford. Lewis Mumford, uh, I admit, I, I mean, I know of Mumford's work, and I've and I've read bits and pieces, but I really need to. Uh, find some time in my life to, but we're going to let, uh, we're going to let Eric Rittenberry <clears throat> introduce us to Lewis Mumford as we dive into part two of his excellent essay. Don't think there'll be a part three. Let's see where, what time looks like. <clears throat> Take it away, Eric Rittenberry. <clears throat> Lewis Mumford was one of the most important American philosophers of the 20th century, but as with Emerson, Thoreau, Whitman, Robinson, Jeffers, John Muir, and all the greats, he is mostly unknown among my fellow Americans who tend to embrace moronic amusement over intellectual and poetic contemplation, Mumford dedicated his life to writing about, quote, the good life of simplicity, self-sufficiency, and community, close quote. He deemed the suburbs, quote, an asylum for the preservation of illusion. <clears throat> His work also consisted of urgent warnings on how the, quote, deceptive orgy of economic expansion, close quote, is poisoning civilization. He believed that limitless expansion eventually leads to total destruction of our cities and breeds neurosis of its inhabitants. What a prophet! In one of his major works, Mumford writes, and now we're going to have a long uh, <clears throat> selection from Lewis Mumford. 
this metropolitan world then is a world where flesh and blood is less real than paper and ink and celluloid. Well, of course, now the internet. It is a world <clears throat> where the great masses of people unable to have direct contact <clears throat> with more satisfying means of living take life vicariously as readers, spectators, passive observers, a world where people watch shadow heroes and heroines in order to forget their own clumsiness or coldness in love, where they behold brutal men crushing out life in a strike riot, a wrestling ring, or a military assault, while they lack the nerve even to resist the petty tyranny of their immediate boss, where they hysterically cheer the flag of their political state and in their neighborhood, their trade union, their church, fail to perform the most elementary duties of citizenship. Living thus, year in and year out, at second hand, remote from the nature that is outside them, and no less remote from the nature within, handicapped as lovers and as parents by the routine of the metropolis and by the constant specter of insecurity and death that hovers over the bold towers and shadowed streets. Living thus, the mass of inhabitants remain in a state bordering on the pathological. They become victims of phantasms, fears, obsessions, which hold them, which bind them to ancestral patterns of behavior, close quote. At this point, you might be saying to yourself, calm down, Eric. What a fucking time to be alive. Look at all the progress we're making. We live longer. Look at our elevated living standards. Everything is improving. We are safer and more secure than ever before. And we carry little supercomputers in our pockets. We're all going to space soon. Yes, you can buy things and have them delivered to your front door in a matter of hours. Even the poor among us live better than yesterday's kings. You're lucky you weren't born somewhere else in some other time where you would not be allowed such grievances. Perhaps if you can divorce yourself from the status quo and its wretched gatekeepers and refuse to become just another one-dimensional marionette in this absurd spectacle, then hell yeah, it's a strange and beautiful time to be alive. It is. But many of us are unable to detach ourselves from the nonsense. Instead, we have evolved well, I would say devolved into unthinking and relentless consumers who readily conform to the social scheme of things. The normal cultural man, as Kierkegaard puts it, who sheds his or her authenticity for a cultural role. Today, we are people who value comfort over freedom, servility over sovereignty, group think over creativity, having over being, security over life. In other words, because we are afraid to face head-on the realities of the human condition, we are easily susceptible to the mind fuckery of the outside world. We become passive 
and obedient folks who barricade ourselves behind feel-good illusions and lies and are easily won over by the dubious narratives and fear campaigns whipped up by the thick-witted demagogues among us. Hmm. <clears throat> With the erosion of common sense and our instinctual wisdom, the modern world is vastly inhabited by incompetent citizens who easily fall prey to the illusory fantasies of the managerial and political elite. As Eric Fromm put it, quote, most people are not even aware of their need to conform. They live under the illusion that they follow their own ideas and inclinations, that they are individuals, individualists, that they have arrived at their opinions as the result of their own thinking, and that it just happens that their ideas are the same as those of the majority, close quote. Carl Jung, one of the most brilliant minds of the 20th century, understood that the further we rescinded from our instincts, the sicklier and weaker we were inevitably going to become as a species. For humans to develop consciousness, a state of awakeness, a split from the instinctive base of our animal nature was needed, but Jung believed that the separation from the ancient wisdom of our instincts had gone too far. Humans had become too domesticated, too civilized writes Carl Jung, I don't know what year this was, <clears throat> quote, civilized man is in danger of losing all contact with the world of instinct, a danger that is still further increased by his living an urban existence in what seems to be a purely man-made environment. This loss of instinct is largely responsible for the pathological condition of contemporary culture." Close quote. Jung reminded us that too much civilization begets meaninglessness, <clears throat> quote, and the lack of meaning in life is a soul sickness whose full extent and full import our age has not yet begun to comprehend." Close quote. He goes on to say that the, quote, upheaval of our world and the upheaval of our consciousness are one and the same. Close quote. With our fierce impulse toward conformity, our synthetic appetites for material possessions, and our relentless obsession with speed, conquest, success, machines, and gadgets. Jung saw, that, saw these things as the antithesis to a healthy society. Jung goes on to write these prophetic words. <clears throat> Take it away, Carl Jung. All time, all time saving devices, amongst which we must count easier means of communication and other conveniences, do not, paradoxically enough, save us time, but merely cram our time so full that we have no time for anything. <clears throat> Hence, the breathless haste, superficiality, and nervous exhaustion with all the concomitant symptoms, craving for stimulation, impatience, irritability, vacillation, etc. 
such a state may lead to all sorts of other things, but never to any increased culture of the mind and heart. The delusion of steady social improvement has been <clears throat> dinned into them so long that they want to forget the past as quickly as possible so as not to miss the brave new world that is constantly being dangled before their eyes by unreformable world reformers. <laughs> Close quote. <clears throat> Back to Eric. As civilization continues to fling itself to pieces, perhaps the only wise thing to do is <coughs> stand back. <clears throat> Stay away from the corporate media and the monetary popular imbecilities that permeate modern culture. <clears throat> Disconnect regularly from the digital madness that has so many of us spiritually benumbed, unplugged, unplug and get outside, get healthy, get out of debt, learn a craft or a skill, romp like a madman in nature, find solace in the science of the inf and the silence of the infinite, slow down, experiment, with plant medicine, <clears throat> yes, real old books deeply and learn how to grow stronger with less. There are no political remedies or economic solutions to the dilemma we find ourselves in. I just got a comment this morning that somebody uh, claiming that Eric is a hopium addict selling solutions. Okay, I forgot who that reader was, but listen, there are no political remedies or economic solutions to the dilemma we find ourselves in. No leaders are coming to set things right. Their allegiances are elsewhere. It is on us, you and I, to alter our attitudes toward life, to revolutionize our hearts and minds, and lean into the sublime. Let go and be. <clears throat> As Henry Miller tells us, quote, being is burning in the truest sense, and if there is to be any peace, it will come through being, not having, close quote. <clears throat> there is an unimaginable world out there beyond our man-made spectacle beyond the petty dramas of our domesticated lives, a world of endless inhuman beauty. We must learn to uncenter our minds from ourselves in the words of the poet, unhumanize our views a little and learn to identify ourselves with the whole divine nature of things. The earth, the night sky, the sun and stars, the mountain forest and the running streams. Step away from the endless parade of flickering images and reclaim your life. Out of the ashes we must prepare to rebuild a new world rooted in the life-enhancing values of community, cooperation, beauty, love, and poetry, a world integrated with rather than in opposition to the natural world we came out of. I will end with a little poem from one of America's finest 20th century poets, an artist who has been largely forgotten in a nation that would greatly benefit from a renewed attention of his works. 
This is from the great Robinson Jeffers, who lived from 1887 to 1962. So according to Robin Jeffers, if not the solution, at least this is the answer. The answer. <clears throat> then what is the answer? Not to be deluded by dreams, to know that great civilizations have broken down into violence and their tyrants come many times before. When open violence appears, to avoid it with horror or choose the least ugly faction, these evils are essential. To keep one's own integrity, be merciful and uncorrupted, and not wish for evil, and not be duped by dreams of universal justice or happiness, these dreams will not be fulfilled. To know this, and know that however ugly the parts appear, the whole remains beautiful. A severed hand is an ugly thing, and man dis man dissevered from the earth and stars and his history for contemplation or in fact often appears atrociously ugly. Integrity is wholeness. The greatest beauty is organic wholeness, the wholeness of life and things, the divine beauty of the universe. Love that, not man apart from that, or else you will share man's pitiful confusions or drown in despair when his days darken. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jeffers. So, uh, anyway, we have some inspiring words. Is that hopium? Uh, it is, it is the answer hopium. Uh, now, I'm not going to put words in Eric's mouth, but of course, uh, you, you know what Sam Mitchell uh, thinks about the chance at this point uh, that humanity is, is going to reconnect with nature, uh, with the moon and the stars, which are getting ready to get hidden behind uh, solar radiation management uh, trails. Uh, what is the chance that, uh, as he mentioned, this newest generation uh, of little uh, technological slaves are, are, are going to ever pay one bit of attention to, uh, to, to any of these people that he quoted. Uh, if, if you could find one person uh, under the age of 18, hell, if you could find one person uh, who recognizes any of the people that, uh, that Eric quoted in, in this essay. I, I would be absolutely flabbergasted. You know, I, you know what I'm talking about. If you did one of these man-on-the-street interviews, I will give you $500 uh, to tell me who uh, you know, Robin Jeffers was or Terrence McKenna. Uh, it, it ain't going to happen. Uh, every single iota of evidence uh, is, is directly pointing to the undeniable fact uh, that the entire human race is moving farther and farther and farther away uh, from Mother Earth, 
uh, and, 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 and the rest of it. We are going straight down the toilet, culturally, uh, environmentally, ecologically, uh, you know. And so at least I am here and Eric is here to chronicle the collapse. So I have a lot to do on this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day today, which does not involve screen time. I'm gonna, it's about 9.30 in the morning. I am going to post this on my little screen and then I will not be back on this little box. I don't know, probably for me. Can I make it 10 hours? Can I make it 10 hours without my little box? So anyway, I need to get out there and enjoy uh, Crazy Crane Campground on this spectacularly gorgeous day. Well, I still can, you know, I sold Crazy Crane Campground last week. <sighs> but anyway, it is mine to enjoy for a few more weeks. So come down and see me at Crazy Crane. I would absolutely love to have anybody Just to come listen to the airboats, come see me in the oasis of freedom. Bye, guys.